Now let's take a look at another cross-section type called a super ellipse, and that can be found here in the type drop-down menu. Now if you look up the equation for a super ellipse, you'll see that you have control over the height and width and these powers m and n. Now we've given you a little extra control that you can turn off top and bottom symmetry for these cross-sections, and you can adjust the location of the maximum width. Now in this case, we've simply recreated a circle by defining the height and width to be equal, and of course the m and n power parameters to be two. So if you look at the equation, that makes an x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. And you'll notice that that's also the equation of an ellipse if you change the height and width to not be equal. So that's all fairly straightforward, but let's look at something a bit more complex. In this case, we have the maximum width location set to be down here instead of along the middle of this component. So you can see that we've turned off top and bottom symmetry. And in this case, we have, say, an n parameter on the bottom that controls the behavior of this point in the curve to now be less than two, and it comes inward. On the bottom itself, we're greater than two, so we're actually pushing out kind of tangent to this surface for a while, and then kind of lofting in. And the top, you see, doesn't change at all. Because both of those are m and n, it's basically treating this as the top half of an ellipse. Now again, we can change these to be whatever we want. We can make it greater than one, we can make it one, we can dial it back. So we can make a lot of interesting shapes out of this super ellipse by turning off the symmetry and adjusting these powers. Now, I wonder what happens if we start moving this around. Let's look at some of the behavior when this, instead of somewhere between negative one and zero, is right at negative one. What that does is it enforces the bottom of this component to be perfectly flat. And you can see that if I drag this around, nothing happens. And that's because the maximum width location is here, and that's associated with the bottom of this part. But if you click on the maximum width position, you can see that we can go all the way up to a factor of 10. And what that means is even though we have our height set to three from here to here with those feature lines, if we make this more negative, we can go past that. So we can make it physically bigger than the height that we have prescribed here. And it's important to pay attention to that. If you set your maximum width location such that it goes beyond the physical height that you've defined in your parameter, that simply means that you need to know how that cross section is going to overlay in your model. It's not that you can't do it, you just have to be aware of the behaviors, that's all. And the nice thing about a super ellipse is that you can create all sorts of interesting geometries that are either representative of something that you're trying to model or aren't really probable or able to be created from something that's a bit more general. So in this case, if we look back here at cross-section three, we've created something that's very akin to the fuselage cross-section of an SR-71 Blackbird. And something to note, that if we come to this section and we create this with, say, a factor of three on top and bottom, we start to recreate something that's a bit like a rounded rectangle. Now, the reason that I demonstrated that is because there have been a number of issues where people have used rounded rectangle in their models and then end up with degenerate geometry failures in something like VSP Arrow. And the reason is that there are perfectly vertical surfaces on the left and right side that get collapsed to a single point. If you're using something like, say, a super ellipse that is not perfectly straight on the sides, those points will collapse down just fine and you'll have something that's very close to a rounded rectangle without actually being coincident. So that's some of the ways that you can use a super ellipse to define a cross-section in your model.